look at the dimensions today it, from a fifth dimensional perspective, which is convergent thought that merges both scientific and spiritual philosophies together. Keeping in mind the theory of relativity, it's essential that we can only understand one dimension relative to the other dimensions. Here's a brief overview of the math or the science behind each of the dimensions as explained by quantum physicists and scientists today. The third dimension is involved with length, width, and height of an object, the physical reality that we see around us. The fourth dimension adds in the space-time as things expand out. And then the fifth dimension is about recursion and how the micro is the macro, so size doesn't really matter. In a nutshell, the third dimension is where we enter into divergent thought, where we eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we leave the garden in perfect communion with our godhead, the planet Neptune, the subconscious mind, and the conscious mind takes off in its own direction, and we suddenly are trapped in the physical world, and we only see ourselves as distinct individuals separate from everything else around us, and everything else around us causes us fear. If you look at the story of creation, it's kind of interesting because God would have created the first divergent thought and we were made in the image of God. So that was our first consciousness thought. When God said, thou shalt not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the human mind doesn't really understand and know. If you ask any good child psychologist, they might tell you that by the age of 11, a child understands no. But the reality is when you say to a child, don't do drugs, the child's mind and adults and humans' minds say, what are drugs? And you've introduced a new concept that they have to try to deal with and that they want to learn and experience. Imagine that God gave you a video game and he said to you, listen, you can play this video game through all the levels all day long. The only thing I want you to do is always play the good person. So you play that good person, you learn what it's like to be a good person, and you achieve all the levels, and you've mastered that game. At the end of that, when you're at the top of the game, what is the next thing you're going to want to do? That's right. You're going to want to play the bad person and see what that feels like. This thought of God being this perfect person, perfect self, all-knowing, omniscient, probably wanted to do the same thing you would have felt you wanted to do after playing that video game. He wanted to create his opposite expression, and that is what we would call Satan. Was it a mistake? There's two things that I definitely disagree with. The more I read the Bible over three years' time, forward, backward, in between, in every which direction that you can imagine, the more I read it, the more I understood that God didn't make a mistake when he created the fall. We didn't make a mistake when we fell into separation consciousness. And the sacrifice or our, route, our road back to the Garden of Eden was already planned for at the time we went into the fall. Still, it's important to understand the third, fourth, and fifth dimensions as our path back to the Garden of Eden. In fact, the story of creation is probably a bit more like this. Here you are up here on a cloud, your soul state of perfection. And you see all the fun other people are having down there in the human body. And you choose to have the similar experience. So let's look at the third dimension from an astrological viewpoint. Mercury rules the third dimension. It's the closest planet to the sun. That would be Mercury up here. Uh, the Tip of the iceberg, the 5% or 10% that's above the surface of the water, that sees what is physical. It's our 5% brain, our conscious mind, which I call the pea brain. And if you look at the three higher brains that we have, this is the reptilian brain. To fall into the third dimension, we actually have to cut ourselves off from the source, the Godhead, the communion with God, the Bible would say, but the Godhead is cut off. And the way we do that astrologically, I can show it to you the easiest. So here is the 100% of our brain if you put together the planet Mercury and Neptune. Now, Mercury sees the conscious physical world, and Neptune is where all our other information and sensory information is stored. But in the third dimension, we build a firewall here between Mercury and the subconscious mind so that the subconscious information doesn't come up, and we live 
just with what we see in the physical world, and that is the struggle of the third dimension. Other characteristics of the third dimension um, encompass us being outward focused because we can't turn inward to the subconscious mind. We have to look outward for all of our answers. We look to teachers. We look to, you know, other authorities that we think are going to teach us something, our parents, our families, and everything else. That's where the whole idea in the Bible of idol worship comes in because we begin to see other people as having something that we have rather than looking within to the Godhead. We're cut off from the Godhead. And we try to memorize other people's knowledge rather than draw from our own knowledge. Then we attempt to quantify everything so as to have more control over them, and we see time as linear. And... When we start off, you know, we're a baby, and when we reach a certain age, we're probably going to die, and that would be the inevitable conclusion, and there is no other way to uh, get around this. But this picture reminds me that it's another day that I haven't used algebra. Our limitation ideas cause us to believe that life is very short, and we only live once. We can't imagine anything beyond this physical reality. The most personal characteristics of the third dimension are would be shame and blame. Everything that is happening outside of you, you feel you have no control over because you don't know how it came to be this way, and you're a victim of your own consciousness because you have cut yourself off from the consciousness that created your reality. And as everybody knows, this is the uh, feelings that cause us to want to seek out something in the fourth dimension. The thing we need to understand is how we create duality in the third dimension. So if we look at the absolute value of things, which would be where the positive and the negative 10 have no value, it's the absolute value, positive and negative is no different, then we need to look at how our thoughts create our reality. And at the zero point would be the perfect will, you know, not really having any other value than what is the good of all, the perfect will of God, as most people would say, or the zero point where we have no intention of anything except to be um, with source. Be still and know. That would be the zero point. When we, in our vanity mind of Mercury, decide to have a thought of creating something that we want to see, we start to get out here on the number line and we hold a value and we decide that, like the baby boomers did, we decide that marriage is the ultimate value. They come by it naturally because they're natal Neptunes in the sign of Libra, which rules a uh, relationship and marriage. So they believe that everybody should be married, men and women only, and um, that marriage should last for a lifetime. Of course, they're in linear time. It's a very third dimensional reality and thought that they had that everyone should be married. That was our ideal. Now, at the same time that we're creating marriage, whether we know it or not, we're creating that value in the absolute value. We are actually creating our fear, divorce. That would be the worst. We, we are married, okay? We find somebody, and now we're going to have divorce. They're going to divorce us. Or we get married, and they cheat on us. These types of fears pop up because we created our value of marriage in a plus 10, we created both the, what we valued and the opposite of it. That's duality. Decide that not everybody can marry and we start to loosen our standards. Then we start to realize, well, you know, some people just want to live together. We can't get married. Uh, we, we ran off on our husband and we're cohabitating with somebody else. And um, so we start to get closer and closer to the zero point where we don't judge anything and we don't create a value and we come back to the center and we arrive at what I call a fifth dimensional relationship. You see somebody, your souls recognize each other and they meet your perfect desires, which would be a true twin flame. And you enjoy the time together until the stars and planets move you away from one another. You don't, you're not possessive. You don't try to own them and control them and these sorts of things. So the truth is that anytime we move towards a value, we're actually moving in both directions at the same time. We'll get what we want, which would be the law of attraction. But as we arrive at our destination, we turn around and our greatest fear is right there coming at us. So we create in duality and we create in karma. And this expansion of both the plus 10 and the negative 10 at the same time is why our universe expands in what the scientists call maximal symmetry. It's an illusion, but that's how both sides expand symmetrically at the same time.